Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We have a very interesting conversation to hold this afternoon because branding is so key for all of us in the 21st century. Branding has actually transitioned over the years <clears throat> thanks to social media and digital media as well. But who better to give us the lowdown on exactly how to build a very strong brand than the one and only Charles Tudor, who's here with us in the studio today to tell us more about building a strong <clears throat> brand and also about an upcoming event that he has as well. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good afternoon. Good Pleasure afternoon. Good to have you. I'm very excited about having this conversation with you because we know that you're very, this is your area of expertise. I mean, your profile is a brand strategist, public speaker, principal consultant of Astrax Branding Management Consortium. So this is basically your area of focus. And just before you came in, we're talking yeah. about insecurity, talking hmm. about the fact that we've suffered so much as a country yeah. in Nigeria, and that has affected not just foreign investments, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm, affected yeah. our reputation internationally. Yeah. I mean, I was having a conversation with someone in a country in the Middle East, and she was talking about how Nigerians are being treated there. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, then, if you could, if you went out of Dubai mm. to another Middle Eastern country, mm. they could give you longer visas. Yeah. But if you're coming back now, the laws have changed for Nigerians. Mm -hmm. it, it has to be strictly two weeks. Yeah. So there are several things that Nigerians are facing in different parts of the world because we've gathered some sort of reputation. Mm -hmm. First of all, how can we remedy this? Wow. Um, it's so good. Let me, I don't know go technical. Let me go very practical. I just go from Rwanda. Um, based on a, a brief from a client, our strategy was to take this brief to Rwanda instead of Nigeria or South Africa. And um, my experience is amazing. I was chatting with some people when I was sitting over there. Rwanda is amazing from a country that came from genocide with all the negativism. But they have a strong leadership, focused leadership. Everything works in Rwanda. I mean, from the airport, this is from the airport. When you board into the aircraft, from the aircraft, you feel a new sense of belonging. You see discipline, you see consistency. It starts with leadership, it's simple. A brand is all about consistency and discipline. Rwanda is a case study of how you can get it right. If anybody wants to study about brand, brand decision branding, how to get it right, they should go and study Rwanda. And how one man, Paul Kigame, has been to do it it doesn't make sense. I, was, I, I stood in awe from boarding the flight, going in and seeing how it works. It's become a culture. At the airport, if, if you ask one single driver, about 10 drivers will call, surround you to help. It's about coming together. So leadership for me is about getting it right from self, not about branding. Let's leave the branding out of it. You talked about how we lost it. It's about leadership from the top. Now, if we have a central figure that is disciplined and strong enough to drive this, you know the stories we have about the Senate, the issues within the Senate, uh, contracts, EFCC, all those are issues that shouldn't happen. If you have a strong leadership, these are issues that should become no-brainers. You are, you are elected to fix, not to give excuses. It's not about age. It's not about how old we are as a country. It's about the determination to get things done. Mm. So branding is not about what you say you are. It's about what people say you are. It's about you doing the right things at the right time and then putting in place structures <coughs> and then enforcing those structures to work. Very true. Now, leadership definitely constitutes to branding, especially that mm -hmm. of a nation. Mm -hmm. But one thing that also constitutes to the branding of a nation would also be civic engagement, I would say. Exactly. How do we now also incorporate that into this discussion? What is the role of the citizen in actually branding your country, and in this case, the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Let's leave the citizens away for first. Has the government itself put in place any structure? After the genocide, the country decided to have what they call community discussions where they allowed those that were involved in genocide to come to their community to confess first. Many years ago, I talked about the, um, the social contract. We must have what they call the social contract. I have no contract with Nigeria. I've grown up in this country. I've made my income here. I've made a name here. You have. But there's no social contract. There's no emotional branding or bond between Nigeria. There's none. So we sit where we are. We are bystanders. We've watched governments come in and go, all different projects come in and go, but we are just bystanders. There's no con connection. It's just got they and us. And I speak on behalf of a lot of Nigerians. What certain governments have done over there is engagement. Okay, you've done some wrongs before. Can we talk about it at the community level? 
Let's have a consensus that this is the way forward. It's not telling us what to do. <clears throat> Let us decide what to do as a country. It's, it's all about emotional connection. The future of brand engagement now is about emotional connections. If you don't connect emotionally to your target audience, you are talking to yourself. You know that. You need to speak to the heart of the individual. You're not talking to, to an inanimate object. You're talking to individuals that are humans. So going forward, I think that government should engage the citizenry. The citizens, we have our problems, yes. But guess what? Do you know we are very gullible as a people? Each time a new government comes in, we are, we are very patient as Nigerians. We are patient. We don't have any Arab rising. None. We take all the excuses and stuff. Nigerians are patient. But we need to go to a point where we get to an emotional connection with the government in place, not just turning down strategies that you want us to accept. So it's all about emotional engagement. Engage Nigerians. Certain policies are done, executed, without engaging us. It's not, this is not a military rule. It's right. democracy. Okay, now one of the things that constitutes us as a country would be our economy, and our economy is made up of businesses, small yeah. and medium mm. uh, SMEs. So basically, let's look at how businesses, let's look at branding mm. and businesses. Mm. Now, the individuals make up the business. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day, we used to find situations where people wanted to push a brand mm -hmm. without the face of the brand. So mm. you would see a very internationally known brand. You know, people know the brand, but mm -hmm. there's no face behind yeah. the brand. Now we're starting to see that change. Mm -hmm. People are pushing not just the brand, the but individual. the face behind yeah. the brand. Why is that? Because you are buying the, the brand, the brand, the individual brand. Gone are the days where you sell a corporate without the individual. The success of the individual brand equates the success of a corporate brand. People are buying into the character of the owner of the brand, the face. One, is it stable? Is it focused? Is it temperate? Those are all elements of branding. So you're not just buying into a company or a conglomerate, you're buying into the culture. So who is the, who represents that brand? It's the face, the individual that represents the brand. So it's not just about the corporate now, it's all about, that brings us back to what I talk about, emotional branding. It's now human to human, it's not about business to business. People buy into brands that they, they trust. It's about trust. And it's not about just buying into slogans, buying into promises. They buy into the promises based on the individual that is running the brand. So it's all about the emotional connection. No longer business to business. It's human to human. Interesting. That's, that's evolution of branding. And now we're talking human to human connections as well. Yeah. Back, okay, not back in the day. We still find that some people say bad news sells faster than good news. Mm. We find that people say all oh, publicity is publicity. So we see situations where there's a negative news or there's a story concocted, mm. all because someone wants to, mm. wants to be in the public eye. And mm. then we now find out some, sometimes it works, sometimes it backfires. There have been several examples mm. in Nigeria. Remember the time Skibi <laughs> faked his own death, although at, the, at some point they came out to say, oh, he actually did die mm -hmm. and there was a misunderstanding there, but Nigerians didn't find it funny. But there have been other scenarios where people tried to tarnish a person's reputation mm -hmm. and it worked in the person's favor. Mm -hmm. Now you're saying that people buy the face behind the brand. Mm -hmm. How does the kind of image, you know, the kind of news, the kind of publicity that goes out about you, how does it affect the brand? Is bad publicity really bad publicity? First of all, don't forget, in branding, you have to look at different genres. You have to look at the social media. Look at the, 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 um, where the brands are coming from. Now, for certain brands, entertainment, you can you segment entertainment, corporate. For certain brands, certain things will work. But long term, they backfire. Why? Because... If you don't have a strong platform and you don't have a consistent platform, you become unbelievable. Corporate brands don't take you seriously. That's why most times, even when you make a mistake, you, you see some brands that understand how to navigate that, the brand strategy would apologize for a mistake because they understand that the serious brands that sponsor them take those things seriously. Now, bad news sells fast, but good news sells better. It's all about who are your target audience. Now, social media has, is a, is a double-edged sword. It makes you, it destroys you. Sure. If you're not careful, the same social media will destroy you if you don't have a strong platform. What you, and what are you selling? If your audience now do not trust you anymore, you're gone. It's all about what you're selling. So if you push negativism, 
as a, as a strategy, it might work for you for some time. With time, you will not have the corporate backup anymore because you can't be trusted. It's all about your brand DNA, and then you have to be consistent. If you're not trustworthy, nobody will invest in you long term. You can keep on selling records. But how many, how many records do we even sell as cities in Nigeria right now? Mm. It's not going online. It's all about sponsorships. It's all about the, the, your appearances. It's all about endorsements. So who's going to endorse you? If all the time you keep on pushing negativism out, you will affect the brands that are going to sponsor you. With time, your endorsement will reduce. Very true. Now, how are you going to sustain? How many albums can you sell in Nigeria? Then who's going to sponsor your events? Who's going to back it up? So it's all about being consistent and being true to your brand DNA and being focused on being real. Realism is the future of branding. Would you say that realism as well is the niche that people can find? The global mm. market today is so competitive mm -hmm. that what we're seeing is that many markets are becoming very saturated. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people are struggling to find their niche given their particular brand in an mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of people are also not thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. What key tips would you give, especially to young people that are trying to build up their own brands and looking for that niche for mm -hmm. themselves, mm -hmm. especially on social media? What is the best way to go about it? One, stick to your... Discover you first. Who are you? Now, we have a lot of brands struggling to be in other people's lane. There's, there's too much copy, copycatism. Yeah. Everybody wants to be like every other person else. More importantly, because we are even aiming for the numbers, because it does seem Just like the, the numbers patient. matter. Define your brand. One, define your brand. When you define your brand, discover who you are and your true purpose. When you do, do that, execute your brand DNA and your SWOT analysis. Once you do that, you get your confidence because you now realize who you are. Then take your time. When you take your time, you can create a compelling strategy that is suited for you alone and is not in competition with anybody else. Now, you see, it's difficult. It's, a lot of people tell me you cannot compete in a very competitive market. That's a lie. That's till tomorrow. You have new, new artists coming out. Now, is this sustainable? How many of them beyond one hit, two hits? Look around you. They, they fizzle away. You can have a hit. Afterwards, how can you sustain it? Is it sustainable? If you are true to your brand, you stick to your lane, you define your brand, and you stay focused on your in it. In it. Look, you are different. When God created you, gave you a thumbprint. You are different. Discover who you are and then create. Let me mention one brand I used to respect so much. Where is Cisco? Mm. No, no, no. Where is Cisco? Yeah. And there are many of them like that in Nigeria as well who've come out who've been like, offs. you know, they've done their hits. But and... we have other artists that are so consistent. They, are, they get on the endorsements all the time. Even when you think they're not relevant, from nowhere they come out again, they're, they're consistent because they have understood and perfected the art of brand strategy. Although with their Cisco argument, I would mm. say that at some point, mm. you know, some brands evolve. You, you, you tend to a different market. I understand what you're trying to say, though. We, we see that now. We don't see lots of Omotol and Genevieve in movies because they're older now. So I think they've also now restrategized no, and they've rebranded. I don't agree with you. Genevieve has moved into a, a greater market. She doesn't work for Exactly anybody. what I'm trying to say. She's Omotola not doing the same thing she used to do back in the day. Omotola last year had about four, five, ego. Four, oh, four movies. Yes. And she did have Fortet Bede, which was a, a resounding success. I was part of that. Now, but that's evolution of brands. Exactly what I'm trying to say. So they, they've evolved. They don't, add, they don't tend to the same um, audience. audience that they used to when, when they were growing. But these conversations are conversations <laughs> we need to keep talking about. They're very important. And I know you have trainings for people yeah, who I want do. to learn more about branding. Yeah. Tell us about the next training you have. Whoops. Um, on June 20th, um, my 47th birthday, I'm doing what I always do every year. Last year, I, I trained 406 entrepreneurs, exceptional entrepreneurs. And um, this year, on June 20th, I'm doing it again. We're doing 1,007 entrepreneurs wow. at the Lekki Coliseum. You guys are invited. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure your stuff will be in your box by tomorrow. Um, so this time around, we're doing it for as a give back. Free, and it's free. Um, it's all about creating brand awareness, helping the exceptional brands go to the next level. And this year, we have something different. Five exceptional entrepreneurs will win exceptional. They have the best pitch, the pitch the best ideas. We'll get sponsorships to go to Switzerland or let's just pay a trip. Brilliant. Cut see of a client. I don't know if, if no, this allow me to mention that. No, you're name. not allowed to okay, mention so that. Okay, so five. And then we have five return tickets for five exceptional people again. Cut see one of Nigeria's leading airlines. We have, I mean, and then. It um, looks really colorful. Yes. How so, can people get to be a part of this? Um, no, they, 
Entries have closed as at um, the 15th. Okay. But you can send an email if you're really interested. If, if they come through this program, if through this program, through Hello Nigeria. they can send it to you. Okay. You forward it to me. Okay. I'll give 100 slots. 100 slots. Yes. Brilliant. If they come through this show, I can give exceptional 100, between 100 and 150 slots. So what information do you need? You need their name? Name. And, or just their names? Names. Okay. What they do. Okay. Name of their business. Why they want to be on the, why they need to be in that hall. Okay. And that's it. They send to you, to your email. You have to announce your email and then you forward to my email and we'll give them, and then you guys are all about the whole cool FM family. Like Azubia that, family every, as well. Is invited. Thank you so Thank much you for so this. Thank you so much. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.